I'd like to next discuss um, another strategy of estimating conditional average streaming effect called R learner, which was uh, recently proposed by Nye and Rager. The assumption is the same as before, so we assume conditional on a set of observed covariates x, the treatment is independent on potential outcomes. And you know, as before, we assume that um, the overlap, so the propensity score pi of x is uh, bounded away from 0 and 1 for all x. Um, a motivating model for the potential outcomes is the following sort of uh, linear formulation. <clears throat> so here we see that the potential outcome yr of t is, is a linear function of the baseline conditional average uh, function, which is exp expectation, conditional expectation of y of 0 uh, given xi, which I'm going to call mu 0. <clears throat> plus the treatment status t times the conditional average streaming fact, the tau of xi. So tau of xi, if you remember, it's uh, mu1 of xi minus mu0 of xi. Okay. So in this way, and then we have an error term. In this way, we basically sort of decompose the potential outcome into uh, the sum of the uh, conditional expectation of baseline outcome y of 0 and the uh, uh, Kate, um, depending on the treatment status. <clears throat> From this, we can write down the partial linear regression for residualized observed data. I say residualized because if you look at this equation, we compute the residual, residual of uh, outcome yi minus expected value of yi given xi. So that's basically the con uh, regression of y given x. So you're subtracting uh, from the observed data the uh, mu of x, uh, regression function. Note that mu of x doesn't have a subscript of the treatment status because this is a regression function of the outcome given the covariates without the treatment, right? So you don't, it doesn't have a treatment uh, variable as a function. And then on the right-hand side, you see that, uh, again, the residualized treatment, so ti minus pi of xi, that's basically the treatment variable minus the propensity score. So it's a re residual for the propensity score. Okay. So essentially, you're regressing the residual for the outcome on the um, residual for the treatment. And um, the coefficient for that residual rise treatment is, it turns out, conditional average treatment effect uh, tau of xi. So this is simple algebraic um, equality by knowing the fact that the mu of xi is equal to mu zero xi plus uh, pi xi times tau xi. Okay. So using that fact, we can rewrite, um, we can derive this of partial linear regression for the observed data from the um, potential outcome model that's given above. Um, what's nice about this is that both are residualized, so they are they're orthogonal to each other. Um, so this also organization really helps um, coming up with efficient estimator for the conditional average streaming effect. So the estimation proceeds uh, based on the cross validation. And the first you train the models using the machine learning models for the propensity score pi of x and mu of x. So re remember the mu of x is the regression of y on x. Okay, so you're going to use some machine learning models. Um, to, to, to estimate these uh, using the cross validation. And then once you have cross validation, you basically have um, second level regression, which is the regressing the residualized outcome on the residualized treatment and characterizing, you know, using the tau of xi to characterize this tau function. Now, if the tau of xi is really complicated, you might have additional regularization term to, to estimate, because uh, the tau is a function of xi, so it could also be a quite complicated function, in which case you need some regularization term. Um, so this is a very general um, procedure where you can use any machine learning models for pi of x and mu of x, um, as well as some kind of regularized um, 
machine learning method for tau of xi and the last step. Finally, let's consider individualized streaming rule or ITR. Once we estimate the conditional average streaming vector k, uh, we can come up with the ITR using the following simple two step procedure. The first, you estimate the conditional average streaming vector, let's call this tau hat of x, using one of the machine learning approaches that we've been discussing. And once we have tau um, hat of x, then we can construct an ITR as um, whether just based on whether the tau hat is positive or not, right? So the idea here is that if uh, based on your characteristics xi, if the conditional average streaming effect estimate the conditional average streaming effect is positive, on average you're likely to uh, benefit from the treatment, so you'll be assigned to the treatment group. If that's negative, then on average you're likely to be um, harmed by the treatment, so you'll be assigned to the control. So that's an effective ITR that can um, um, you know, improve the average outcome. Now the problem of this two-step procedure is that the first step, the estimation of the conditional average streaming effect is not um, related to the construction of an optimal ITR. So the resulting ITR may not be optimal. So ideally what we want to do is we want to estimate the conditional average streaming effect such that uh, we can construct the optimal uh, individualized treatment rule. So that's the approach that was, um, that's called the outcome weighted learning, um, was proposed by Zhao et al. in 2012. And here the idea is that we're going to regard the construction of ITR as the optimal classification problem. That is, we want to classify individualized um, based on the estimated conditional average streaming effect. The ones who have positive a k should be assigned to the treatment group, and ones who have negative um, k should be assigned to the uh, control group. Okay. So let's consider a randomized experiment for the sake of simplicity. So here we're going to assume that treatment is independent of the covariates x, as well as the potential outcomes. Now we can think about the optimal ITR is the individualized treatment rule that maximizes average outcome under this rule, right? So the f of x is either one or zero. So y of f of xi means that outcome um, of unit i under the treatment rule f of xi. And we want to uh, come up with the procedure f uh, ITRF such that the average outcome is maximized under that rule. Now that's the same thing as um, minimizing the average outcome under the opposite of this ITR, right? So if we assign the treatment, um, if, we, if we do the opposite of the optimal ITR, that's 1 minus f of xi means, that is assign a unit to the treatment group uh, when the ITR says assigned to the control group, and if the ITR says assigned to the treatment group, then assign the unit to the control group. So, so do the opposite, right? If we minimize the average outcome under this opposite ITR, that's basically the same thing as getting the optimal ITR. Okay, so we can um, we can sort of uh, rephrase it as uh, maximizing the classification versus minimizing the misclassification. Okay? In other words, we can look at the average outcome from the experiment. We have a treated units who are, according to the treatment rule F, um, according to the, they should be assigned to the control. But in experiments, since it's randomly assigned, they happen to be treated. Okay? So we can try to minimize, we can try to come up with a rule uh, such that the average outcome of the treated units who are supposed to be controlled is minimized. Similarly, we can look at the control group and then look at the people who are supposed to be in the treatment group according to this ITR. And we try to come up with the ITR such that average outcome of those people, those misclassified people are minimized. Right? So that's basically the idea. Like let's minimize 
the average outcome of the misclassified individuals uh, in the achieving group and control group. And because it's in uh, it's it's a randomized experiment, we can actually we will have the mis uh, misclassified individuals, and we can estimate their average outcome. So this turns out to be the same thing as the classification problem, and I can write it as the following equation. So you mean you you're coming up with a tau that's a conditional average Schumann effect such that the misclassified average outcome is minimized. So it's easy to show that the above equation uh, over minimizing over f is the same as this for the bottom equation where I am using AI, which is um, following the convention in the classification literature, takes the value of negative one for control and one for the treated. Okay, so it's just to transform the treatment variable. Um, treatment variable usually takes zero and one. I transform it to negative one, one. Um, and uh, pi is just a proportion of the treated. And so the denominator uh, is equal to pi if ai equal one, um, if it's equal to one minus pi if ai is uh, negative one. Okay. So basically what this uh, shows is that um, this idea of minimizing the outcome of the mis misclassified units can be thought of it as the classification problem. So whether AI, the actual treatment that in the experiment is the same as recommended treatment, the sign of pi, tau of xi under this ITR. Okay. And that, uh, and the minimizing that, and uh, you can think of the yi of, uh, of this um, ai pi plus 1 minus ai over 2 as a weight. So it's a weighted classification problem. Um, and in the original article, the Zhao et al. uses the support vector machine to come up with um, tau of xi. Okay, so this is the um, sort of one-step procedure where um, you use uh, you come up with the optimal ITR, um, you know, uh, you estimate the case such that you can derive the optimal ITR. Okay, we'll stop here.